Well, uh, me and Q go tour on tour, we, we usually go through the basics of scratching, but to make it a little bit more interesting, uh, Q's going to actually run through the history, a uh, little timeline, just like the Beat Jugglers did it, but this time with scratching, and DJ Flair will execute all the scratches from day one all the way till today, the history of scratching. So um, this is kind of like uh, one of those reports I had to do on scratching. Kind of like in, in school, when I was in school, I, I got like D's and F's and stuff. And, and I would always wait, like you have to do a term paper, and I would always wait for the last day and be like, hey man, let me get your notes, man. You know, get five bucks or something. I'll get the notes and do the whole, or just go in the encyclopedia and copy the whole thing. Yeah. So this is kind of like my first uh, real report. So anyway, scratching uh, is the, the way we learned it is what I'm going to talk about. So it might be different for you guys, but the way we heard it, this is how it sounded. So anyway, in hip hop, we first heard scratching, I guess uh, it started in the mid 70s when Grand was with Theodore. And uh, this is the first scratch, how it started back then. It would be, they would play breaks. Uh, breaks are, you know, the, the part of the record that's just the drums. And um, right before that, there would be like a little drum roll or maybe no drum roll at all. And um, they would scratch the beginning and, and let the break go. This is, I want to show them a break. <laughs> Of course you guys know what the break is, so don't want you to do that style of scratching back then. Alright, then of course it got more advanced in um in eighty two you heard Wild you seen Wildstyle, you seen DST, uh, scratch good times, and then you finally in 83, it made its debut, debut on TV with Herbie Hancock, of course, and um, this is how scratching sounded in 83. I guess DJs at that time were like uh, Jam Master J from Run DMC and, and DST and I guess the uh, world famous Supreme Team from uh, Malcolm McLaren. So then 84 comes and um, this is what I call, uh, uh, what, this is when you started right, 84, right, when you started scratching. Um, around 84 was, I used to call that the, uh, the Ice Age because Mixed Master Ice kind of ruled that era. It was with um, so he was UTFO, there was like Silver Spinner and Howie T, and uh, this is how that spell sounded in 84. Four style. Then 85 came, and this is pretty much when we started. When did you start DJing, Dave? 85. Um, Mixed Master Mike started in 85. And uh, around that time, um, like, uh, we heard, like, the scratch got faster. And uh, people were like, like Barry B, Chill Will. Um, and again, still, Mixed Master Ice was around. Um, this is that style. <laughs> And there was also uh, tears. We first heard tears for our first time. All right, then uh, 86 comes along, and uh, this is the time when Philadelphia DJs were uh, predominant. This was um, a Cash Money, of course, Jazzy Jeff, Tap Money, um, Code Money. Um, and of course, Transforming came in, and Chirps, chirp, faster Chirps. Chirps were in, but it's like more of, of a triplet chirp. What, what do you have right now set up? Uh, a whistle? Or what? what do you got? Yeah. Okay, uh, he's gonna do the, the thing. Uh, the reason why we call Chirps Chirps is because uh, 
uh, on the song Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. It's called The Magnificent Jazzy Jeff. And uh, the Fresh Prince said, now make it sound like a bird. And he said, now make it chirp. And this is what a chirp was. And of course, Transforming came in, 86. move on to 87. Uh, 87 is uh, the first time we've seen a new music seminar videotape. You know, someone bootlegged it and it got to my house and I was, I, I was selling it to these guys and that's how I, I met these guys. <laughs> so, um, so you got the, what do you have set up over there? What do you have set up over there? You want to do the, um, uh, do the, uh, uh, let's see, do the, uh, the Easy G one. Yeah. Um, this is like uh, when transforming started using more than one sound. And uh, this is kind of like an old school pattern mixed with a new school pattern uh, at the time in 87 with Transforming. DJs around that time, like Mr. Mix, he, Mr. Mix actually, uh, probably, I don't know if he bid it or something, but I want to say that, but he did that on, a, um, on the uh, Two Life Crew album. Then, of course, 87 was Joe Cooley era. Um, over here in the West Coast, we cut fast and stuff, you know, and we were known for that, I guess. Oh, yeah, the, the West Coast only scratches fast, the East Coast were more funky. That was that whole West Coast, East Coast thing back in the days. But uh, anyway, so this is the Joe Cooley scratch, which was... Uh, chirped tears along with like really fast, um, really fast tears. Uh, <laughs> hey. you, oh, you want to play a beat? So he's going to play a beat right now. Yeah, okay. He's going to play a uh, beat right now and he's going to do the Joe Cooley scratch. For us in '87, there was other DJs like Bobcat, uh, well, Mr. Mix, so I say that already. Um, DJ Man from Miami, uh, DJ Toomp, the uh, next DJ from for MC Shady. Uh, huh? Who? Oh, that's a, uh, oh, that's a uh, um, uh, DJ Man. <laughs> MCUB, by the way. So, um, okay, 88, transforming got faster. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? King Tech. Which one? Okay, um, oh yeah, okay. Um, I skipped one which was uh, pretty important uh, back in the days uh, in, in 87. When we first heard, uh, I guess Jeff called it the beatbox scratch. I don't know what Cash called it. Is Cash around? Cash money around? Okay, well, we'll get the right uh, definition for this if you can come here. But anyway, this is the first time we heard transforming with with drums behind it, and um, heard the new music seminar when Cash did this routine. <laughs>
Okay. Okay. So um, I guess uh, an 88 came, and um, we heard transforming get faster. And what we heard too was um, tears being transformed. And uh, how many of you heard of the Wake Up Show? Everyone's pretty much heard of that. King Tech had a song called "We Want to Rock You," and he would he just went off at the end, um, transforming his tears. And it, uh, yeah, you want to do that? <laughs> Styles in uh, '88, a lot of transforming different techniques. Even uh, like Aladdin um, did like a push in his transform and um, sound like this acapella style. <laughs> Also, I want to acknowledge uh, Cash Money did that too. That's uh, with the uh, the push. Uh, Cash, he's right here. <laughs> you know, uh, Jet. Cash Money. Yeah. Jeff called the thing with the beatbox scratch with the drumming. What, what what do you call that? And do you think you did that before he did? What do you think? Well, Jeff was the first person to ever put you know everything on wax. Mm -hmm. um, right, right. There was I have to credit. There was um, another DJ in Philly called Lightning Rich that was doing, um, he did a routine off of uh, the Fat Boys, uh, uh, come on beatbox, play one for me, and he would take the, uh, the bass sound, boom, 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 and his MC would say, hey Rich, who's the baddest DJ? And he would go, chicka chicka me, you know what I'm saying? So um, I have to credit light and rich for that um jeff was the first person to ever you know you know put things you know dj and transform and all that on wax first so when did uh scratch it how many of you guys heard scratch into the funk well that's a like a really historic record where i thought that, that was maybe the first transformer record was that the first one or did that come out later what do you think i don't even know man i got paid like 150 dollars to do that record man uh -huh. <laughs> To me, that was big money back then. I didn't even know uh, it was going to blow up to be so big. I mean, uh, I was talking to Rob Swift about this earlier. Um, I never cut Pump Me Up ever in my life. And the owner of the uh, label asked me to uh, do a special mix with it. And it just came out how it came out. So It's a real rare record. If you guys ever find it, it's like a billion dollars. You know, it's I don't even have one. I don't have one. <laughs> You got two, come back to fast too. <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, um, Public Enemy sampled it for um, Fight the Power. Like the beginning when it goes, pump, you pump, did you pump. So every time I, see, I hear uh, the Deaf Comedy Jam, I hear my scratch. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> right. Um, thanks, Cash. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> so I guess I want to move on to uh, around 89. How many of you guys have heard a really, really underground group called Hijack? Okay, well, DJ Supreme and Undercover were like a really underground group for us back then when we, we were DJing around, around 88, 89. And when we heard their scratches, they were way ahead of their time. This is DJ Supreme from Hijack, not the one from the US, but from the UK. Can you come up here? You guys just don't know, but this guy invented a lot of underground styles that, that people don't know about. like. Like this one reverse grab. Like 
all the way back then in what year was that? That was like, uh, I think I was um, uh, 80, 80, 89. Uh -huh. And what was your mentality? You remember you were talking about you wanted to just destroy the U.S. or something? What was that all about? <laughs> well, um, in, in the U.K., the, the, the rap scene is like, um, it's, it stays within the borders. It doesn't really get out anywhere. And a lot of the rap acts that were coming out at the time weren't really, you know, making any impact in the U.S. I mean, you did have a few groups like Derek B, uh, maybe, uh, Cookie Crew. And um, in my opinion, and a lot of people on, on, who were real hardcore and on the street, they were thinking that, okay, they, they were okay, but they weren't representing what real people felt, felt on the street in terms of hardcore. And I was one of those people, and I was just like, okay, they're good, but I'm going to be better. So um, we, we got a crew together, and the whole idea behind this crew is to be elitist and to, to basically take on anybody who was in the UK, but more more specifically to take on the US and to take on all, all, the, all the DJs that were out there that were coming out and you know just to, just to show and prove just to show and prove really right you know it's not to take anything away from the, from the US DJs because they, they were major influence in our style we took a lot of their, their you know different techniques uh, Whiskey was an uh, influence for me uh, DST as well um, Cash Money definitely was an influence, scratch it to the funk, I got that record as well. Um, man, all that stuff is incredible and that helped us to develop styles um, you know, that we're, we're, we're pretty pleased with that. Um, and people, you know, people like Cuba have heard that record, to me is amazing. And you know, to come out here and hear, hear him call me up on stage is like, I know that really. So it's nice to be here, man. Oh man. If you guys... If you guys ever find that record, it's called Hijack, and that's the name of the group, yeah. and it, it was him, Supreme, and DJ, DJ Undercover. Undercover, and they just destroyed everyone, and they even had this scratch back then. Right here. All the way back in, yeah. 88 was it? Yeah, 88. This was around the, cat, uh, the, um, the public enemy time, when... Uh, when like Johnny Juice Rosado did, who did the, the first two scratches on the first two Public Enemy albums, and everything was hard, you know, everything was like <laughs> real angry, and it was just power scratching, you know, that whole you know, kick your ass with scratching. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks a lot. No problem, man. <laughs> All right, moving on. 89. Wait, should I say that? Okay. Okay, 1990. This is the year I call the death of scratching because the dat came in and, they, and the DJs were no longer needed. So the DJs moved on to a producing kind of like area, you know, making beats and stuff. And, and there was no need for the DJ because, you know, we were talking about this yesterday, the DJs. You know, sometimes the deals will skip, the MCs will get mad, and the MCs can make more money without the DJ. Like, I just play this day, you know, I don't need that, you know, DJ. And um, so that was the death of scratching in, in the 90s, but we kept going on underground. Anyway, no one cares. 1991? <laughs> uh, I guess this was a time of uh, experimental scratching. Uh, in 91, we kind of like, we're scratching with long tones and, and you know, spinning the right arm. Why do you do uh, some... Like exotic long tone scratching. This is really easy, but go ahead, do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Eddie Deaf. Is Eddie Deaf here? Space travelers in the house? <laughs> That's definitely them. All right, so um, 92, Team Scratching is introduced in the competitions. Turntable bands begin forming, and flaring is introduced. Um, I mean, I was selling, I mean, yeah, once again, I was selling the, the dubbed videotapes of the competitions, and, and this guy comes over, and uh, at the time, I was kind of conceited, you know, like, man, who's this guy? And, <laughs> okay, anyway. So this guy comes over, and every time I, he wants to scratch, and I'm like, oh, all right, go ahead, scratch. And then every time I would turn my back, he would do the scratch. This is called the original flare, that's what I call it. Uh, back then I thought I thought he was transforming and, and back then we were trying to like transform really fast and we thought we were the fastest but we were really like you know transforming is really hard because you got to keep keep going it was like it was like but he just he was just kicking back and I was like what what the hell is that scratch and I was like so anyway okay so DJ Disc was my partner around the time he lived like right next door and I called him I said hey, Disc come over you know check out this guy's crazy big ass white dude and so they came over and and so this <laughs> so so this came up he saw it and, and he came up with the uh, two click orbit so it's like two click flares two clicks forward two clicks reverse he calls it an orbit so this is what the orbit sound like <laughs> Then D-Styles, D-Styles comes over and, and sees the scratch too. And he goes back, he lives far, he lives all the way in the East Bay, he drives all the way like 40 minutes. And he goes back home and he comes back, well not 40 minutes, but he comes back maybe a couple months later and he comes up with the uh, one-click flare. So then, Flair sees all this and he's like, hey, you've got to take my scratches. So he comes up with a three click Flair. Do your, uh, do your variation of that three, three click. We still don't know. We still don't get that scratch. So 93 comes along, and D Styles introduces a combo, which is a chirp to a flare combo. Yeah. So around 94, mixers change as well, and um, that's when I made uh, Invasion of the Octopus People. Um, it was like, uh, I, I don't know if you noticed, but on that song, um, I was using like a, a clicker. This is called a clicker, the little switcher. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, that's the clicker. So mixers started, we started getting the DMC mixers in with the little, with the strong cutoff, the little cutoff, and, and we started using those at that time. Okay, anyway, so 95 comes along and the crabs come in. Why don't you do some crabs? Ninety-six 
comes along and combos with crabs and flares. Uh, okay, combos with crabs, flares, chirps, and transforms then. Yeah, scramble it up right now. So 97 comes along and that's when we make turntable TV and we get to showcase a lot of like techniques on for for a long period of time. Like that's the older turntable TVs, now it's a lot of bullshit. But uh, <laughs> anyway, 97 was a style where where we did a lot of well I did a lot of fades at that time. And um that was, I guess, back then, that's what I was doing. In 98, 98 more internet DJs uh, can hear each other. Scratch perverts are using multiple fingers. And uh, some album called Wave Trigger is going out. In 1999, the turntable outsells the electric guitar in Japan. Scratch DJing becomes the biggest thing, and so now 2000, um, let's end it off with a, a recap of all the scratches since the mid-70s. So beat, yeah, you can play beat. Okay. All right, give it up for DJ Flair. Thank <laughs> you.
Give it up for DJ Flair. All right, we're going to start with some two-hand exercises here. First, we're going to start off with a zigzag. 